it won't be long i'm going to be installing this diesel heater in this greenhouse but before then i'm going to show you some upgrades that are going to make the diesel heater run more efficiently as well as tuning it to make it run more efficiently therefore burning less fuel but more importantly less carbon buildup i see a lot of people that have problems with carbon buildup they got to take these all apart clean them out put them back together and it's big problems that's because they're not running efficient and i'm going to show you how to do that in this video so stick around before i get into the small modifications and tuning this diesel heater let's take care of some common misconceptions on how these should be set up and let's look at what they actually are this is nothing new been around for over 40 years the insides the heater itself is nothing more than a bunk heater from a tractor trailer if you look at how they're installed on a tractor trailer you'll know the best way to use these for your application in a tractor trailer the diesel heater unit is placed underneath the bunk in a toolbox area from there through the floor going outside is your exhaust pipe goes one way the air combustion intake goes out the opposite way so it doesn't suck fumes from the exhaust the air combustion intake is sucking cold air from outside bringing in combusting and then going out the exhaust so those tubes should be run outside the combustion air if it's drawn from inside such as a structure like this it'll create a vacuum sucking for the combustion air when it runs out of air in here it becomes sucking so it's sucking air from every crevice crack in between any board that has a crack it's pulling cold air inside you don't want cold air inside you want the air inside warm therefore your combustion air should be outside now let's get into the modifications first modification i did was upgrade the fuel line this is what i have left over i'm going to show you right now in a small video of what it looks like inside when i installed it it has some rubber pieces that go on the ends to convert to the size on the filter and the fuel tank etc it comes with hose clamps and all these products that i'm using i will put a link down below in the description through my amazon influencer page and i appreciate that because it gives a small contribution back to this channel next upgrade uh not really an upgrade just something i prefer is i use this titanium exhaust wrap high heat so what it does is it keeps the heat off the outside of the pipe if you were to bump into it or something you don't get burnt as easy this comes with a couple clamps and it's enough one roll is enough for one pipe as you can see next modification i like to do this is the combustion air intake tube it's kind of like a foil lined cardboardy flexible it's not very long for the application where you're putting it through a floor if you're mounting this in a van or something that's all you need because you go down and out put the filter on the end um, what i did is i got another piece of this flex pipe and i hooked it there you could actually do away with this and just use the hose but i like the the ease of this just sliding on and off for uh mobility a couple hose clamps that come with the kit and i have six feet of this rubber plastic uh, PVC whatever type of material it is it has steel rings inside it so you cannot collapse this because you always want a solid flow of air uh, six feet of this I can run this out the wall I can run it up put it wherever I want I use this in my ice shanty I'll just use it in here as well on the end I did away with the cheap plastic filter they give you with the unit and I have this K&N style filter to connect from the filter to the hose I have a small piece of one inch copper pipe right here uh, just a sweat on fitting that I had laying around I'll link all this stuff like I said in the description below if you want to recreate it but this will give you plenty of flexibility to run this out the wall and away from the exhaust because last thing you want is be sucking exhaust back inside the combustion chamber okay so now that we went through those real simple little modifications to make this just a little bit better let's get into the real important thing tuning it so it doesn't give you carbon buildup issues and so it uses fuel efficiently the settings on these will be different for everybody because it depends on your altitude etc so let's get started so in order to properly tune these diesel heaters you only need one tool a carbon monoxide detector not a carbon monoxide alarm or monitor not one of the ones you hang in your house those are great to keep in your building or your tent or wherever you're using this heater to alert you if there is an issue with carbon monoxide but this is what you want to use to tune it because it does a low end 
accurate reading of the carbon monoxide parts per million. Comes in this nice case. This is by Top Test, and this is model CT300. And to start it up, you just simply hold down that power button till it beeps. It goes to a warm up mode. And then once it's ready, it'll beep twice. And now it is ready. This is the sniffer end. So you basically just hold this where you want to test for carbon monoxide. It'll give you a reading of how many part per million right here. And you can set this to alarm at a certain amount too. So you can set it for 50 parts per million and walk around in the area. And when it hits at 50, it'll start alarming. Um, you could set a high end too. So it'll alarm from there to there. Uh, there's a lot of different features with it, but basically all we need to do is just look at the screen and watch that part per millions. So this is a CT300 by Top Test. And I'll also have a link to this in the bottom. So check this out. This is a great tool to have, not only for this, but you could use this around your house too. If you think you have a carbon monoxide leak or you just want to test some uh, gas appliances or something, awesome item to have so let's get to it so first thing is you want to get everything set up your battery and everything of course and fire it up and let it go through its heat up cycle let it warm up and then we're going to go into the settings and we're going to use the tester and test it when you first power it up put it in your uh, hertz mode out of the celsius if you don't know how to do that you just press the okay and up button at the same time it'll switch over to hertz and crank it up as hard as it goes. Mine's set to 5.3 right now. So we're gonna bring that up to temperature and we wanna have the full bars here for the burner and let it run for a few minutes after it's up there and then we'll test the carbon monoxide output. Ideally, what we're looking for is around 20, less than 30 um, teens would be ideal, but we can always bump it up a little bit. Um, less than 30 is going to be where less carbon buildup is inside. It's smoking good now because I put the filter in. I had to prime it. Um, so it's the first time it's run with the new fuel line and, and primer. So it did push out a little smoke at first. And it might be because it's not tuned properly. So we'll get to that right now. Okay, so it's been running for a few minutes. As you can see, I'm up to the red bar here. Now, if you don't achieve that red bar, you're going to have to go into the settings. I'll show you how to do that in a minute and increase your hertz because it's at mine's at 5.3 um, you might need to go further up if you're not getting that final red bar after five minutes or so of running um, took less than five minutes for me but let's go ahead and we'll test that now at 5.3 hertz and see what carbon monoxide is putting out power on keep it away from the exhaust and let it go through its warm-up cycle the bar will continue up Part per million. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm putting my fingers near the plastic. That way I can feel before it gets too hot. It's not gonna melt the plastic and I hold it so that it's catching that exhaust. I can feel where the exhaust is blowing. And we're up pretty high, we're at 212. It's still really high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reduce those hertz so that we bring that down. Okay, so to get into your settings, press the gear setting button. Keep pressing it till you get the four lines and you want to put one, okay, six, okay, eight, okay, eight. So your code is one, six, eight, eight. And that brings you to the low setting. We're going to leave that for now. And there's our high hertz, 5.3. We're going to drop that down quite a bit because I'm gonna go to like 4.5 and see what happens because that was um, pretty high on the carbon monoxide level. So we'll jump down to 4.5 and then we'll adjust up or down from there. So we press okay. And this will take me to my fan speed. Now your fan speed, I have for my low 1450 RPM and my high is at 4500 RPM. I would suggest keeping yours right around that area too. Um, whatever they are, if you change them, you're going to have to change your hertz again to go with it. And then it goes through voltage and all this other stuff. Just keep pressing OK till that's all done. And now you'll see the high is 4.5. That's as high as I can go. So we're going to run that level out and run for about five minutes or so. And we're going to keep an eye on these red bars. If these bars drop down, 
And I'm gonna have to raise that 4.5 because remember, you wanna keep those bars up all the way. Go up and down a few times with my Hertz. And I'm at 4.4 right now. And I had all the bars. I was at 4.2 and I was down one bar. So I had to bring it up just a little bit. 4.2 was running pretty clean. It was like 32, 33 parts per million carbon monoxide. And I just had to bring it up to 4.4 in order to get all the red bars here in the burner. So it's burning efficient. So I'm gonna test it right now. And it's probably not too much different um, if it's up just a little bit higher. That's as close as it's gonna get. So that's my high end right there. So let's check that out. So now we got the top end. I think it was 37 parts per million on the tester, which is really good. And now I'll go into the settings, 1688, and we will set the hertz for the low level. We'll go up and down with the hertz, keep testing the exhaust, get right around between 20, 30 in that general range, um, while still maintaining full red bars on this burner here. Um, if we have to adjust it, up or down a little bit to, to get the burner all the way um, then we will but that's going to be most efficient so we got our high end set low end set everything in between should be perfect pretty soon i'm going to have a video up showing how to install an actual thermostat in this unit so that it'll shut down properly and start up at desired temperature that video is coming soon top test ct300 carbon monoxide detector I'll put a link down below in the description for this, as well as those other upgrade parts that I used on this unit. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that your diesel heater runs better after using this method. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions, or if you tune your heater a different way, let me know. Thanks for watching.